Tennessee Live the shiners and blue collars Simple folk like you and me If it falls, we let it lay Just a story for another day And if it grows, we grow it high To the good Lord by and by I'm Johnny Ashley in the Hood in the Woods. Today, we are in Nuttall Burg, West Virginia. We are in Fayette County in the New River Gorge National Park System. Now 364 days a year, this is a major tourist attraction, but I have decided to pull the super genius move of showing up here on Christmas Eve, and now we have it all to ourselves. Did y'all hear that? You can find me on Facebook as The Real Hood in the Woods, and you can find me on Instagram as Abandoned in Appalachia. For more mountain music, check out Clovis Draper's YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and put a link for that in the description. Also, if you'd like to help me by financially supporting this channel, I'll put a link for that in the description as well. In 1870, British entrepreneur John Nuttall began buying land in the New River Gorge. In 1873, the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad reached the town of Nuttallburg, and the town was ready to go. The post office here opened in 1893. The mine here was the second one in the New River Gorge to ship out smokeless coal. Smokeless coal was popular for residential heating and it was seen as more environmentally friendly when used on an industrial scale. John Nuttall died in 1897 and he left all his land and his mine to his family. In 1920, Henry Ford bought the mine and the town. He tried to pull a monopoly move where he would own the coal mine, the railroad that moved the coal, and the steel mill that the coal was taken to. Henry Ford ran his operation under the name Ford Son Coal Company. Henry Ford made lots of improvements to the mine and the town. Henry Ford built this tipple in 1923. His monopoly move failed. He had bit off more than he could chew. He couldn't control all of his businesses, nor could he finance them. He sold his interest in the mine in 1928. Three more owners operated this mine until the operation ceased in 1958. In 1955, Nuttall Burr got the biggest sign you can get of being a ghost town. His post office closed. Behind me sits the company store. Workers were paid in script. In 1922, 80% of miners in West Virginia lived in a company town. So let's just come down here and check out the company store. And this looks like it's rock built with rocks. They either pulled out the, the river or they pulled off the mountain. But we come in here and we can just get a nice little look around. Is this uh I'm not sure what that is, but that was left here. And if we come out right right across from it, we have the unused rail lines. And then right next to that we have this wall here. And what these are going to be inside is that these are coke ovens and a coke oven is they would put the coal in it and then they would use it, use it to uh, cook off all the impurities in the coal to make it make it more desirable for industrial use and we come inside and see what one of these looks like and we get in here and I don't know what that hole is uh, directly in front of us but they got the the exhaust hole here and besides that this looks like it's a, a dome a brick made dome this is seldom seen it was built in the early 1900s it had 12 houses but all that is left of them is these foundations here it was a satellite camp for Nuttall Bird seldom seen is located about a quarter mile away from the tipple this is the closest spot of land that was flat enough to build houses that would be out of the way of the mining operations and would also be high enough that when the river rose 
and the water wouldn't sweep away the houses. We're just walking down the trail here in Seldom Scene. Now that's going to be the first house and when we come up here are you seeing them? That's going to be be the second house here and if we just keep on going and turn our way up that's going to be the third house and you can just spot these uh the tears sticking up and that would have been the foundation that they would have been laying laying the boards on to build the house but I guess if we say in the end nature reclaims nature takes it back and uh, I guess this is about some of the best evidence that I can show you of that. Like most of the mining communities, Nuttallburg was segregated. So what we're doing now is walking into where the old black church would have been. And this foundation, which is directly below the uh, church, this would have been the old black school. But uh, it's like everything else, nothing is uh, nothing's left of it except the foundation. So this is going to be the other half of the tipple. And you can see it goes all the way up the mountain to where the mine is, and then the coal was loaded on it, and it would come down here to where it was loaded onto the trains for export. So there's just like a couple of these old brick buildings laying around and like, I don't know, maybe that's a little ghost townish to you. To me, that's just, that's just being in West Virginia. So we're going to come down here. You see the sun's just been messing up my shooting all day. If you hear that noise too, we're at the, uh, right at the, at the base of the new river. I couldn't really film down here because I didn't want to mess up my audio. But you could see, here's the train lines where the, the train cars would pull up. And then right here, these conveyor belts were cut on, and that's how all the uh, coal would be loaded into the train, and then it could be, be exported to cities far and wide to be used in the Industrial Revolution or fighting World War II, or I guess possibly fighting World War I, maybe for locomotives going through uh, the Old West, which was something else that was going on during all this time. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you like it. If you did like it, you need to hit the like button and you need to hit the subscribe button. Don't be watching my stuff for free.